Welcome to another video of GeoSpinach. Today we are going to analyze defense in depth and why it's very very vital for your infantry to never be let exposed and to always retreat to good defensive terrain and then entrench that terrain with either uh, trenches, anti-tank positions, pre-assign artillery positions, pre-assign anti-tank viewpoints and so forth. So let's get into the video. Now this is going to be a war game scenario where we analyze the video very specifically and where each unit goes where. Uh, we assume here that each unit is a battalion. So the one with X are reinforced infantry of the black team. So uh, they have much more uh, extra companies in them. The one with the circular armor units, the one with the lines are mechanized, the one with the circular artillery pieces, the one with the iron is uh, anti-tanks, uh, and the one with the AA is anti-air positions. Now before we start, let's see the defense position of the uh, red team. The red team has a, a dual or a thrice but a dual defensive line with a rear guard action in the front. What does it mean? It has few platoons with uh, a, a special anti-personnel mines, anti-tank uh, positions uh, in good defensive terrain. Uh, all of their cities are especially extra reinforced with ammunition, so they are expecting uh, a breakthrough in. And the idea of this system is that you always retreat to a good terrain position such as this, which you have a mountain side or a hilly side from the south. The green are foresty areas, so really hard to fight in. And the idea is that once you receive the assault, maybe it's in the battle front that you are not expecting, like the scenario we analyzed previously in the other video, and you retreat to this better position, you receive the blow of the attack and you are expecting reinforcements and your objective is to delay the enemy as much as possible and cause as many casualties as possible. Now, again, we should not forget the fog of war. Now, I didn't go into the creating the fog of war on each envelopment, just keep it in mind, the fog of war that each side doesn't know what's really happening. Again, we're kind of ignoring air power, but we can assume that there is air combat in this situation and the AI and the entrenched positions play a very important role. Now, before we start, uh, you should understand that the, the red team has already pre-assigned its artillery positions and already has calculated the ranges and everything. So the moment they see the first armored units, they will start attacking with their uh, artillery pieces. Also, there are anti-tank uh, battalions that I have here. What I truly show here is that they are dispersed across all of the infantry battalions to reinforce them with extra anti-tank, with pre-assigned anti-tank positions. Now, the black team knows that they have superiority in the area, but they maybe they don't know the complexity or the extent of the defense in depth that they are expecting to face. And here, always remember the concept we said in the other video about breakthrough, that it's not only about breaking the front line at all costs at that position. You must have troops remaining for the exploitation phase. So, the black team will focus on uh, attacking across the front line and pinning down the infantry. They are expecting the enemy infantry uh, to be around these positions, and that's why their infantry will focus on attacking these positions as well as their artillery. At the same time, the red team is just waiting for the battle to envelop, and the artillery and the anti-tanks and pre-assigned positions attack the armor the moment they see it. And as the battle progresses, a lot of the uh, red units, rear guard, start to get heavily damaged and destroyed, but the black team is gradually getting slowed down. They are facing quite a lot of resistance and unexpected resistance, but they decide to push on. And as they do push on further and further in, their plan now is, once they encounter the first line of defense, 
according to the German school and as well as the Anglo-Saxon school to try and go around uh, the main positions of the enemy. So their mechanized forces will push on the south, as you can see here, while the armored forces will move to the north to try to avoid go around these pre-existing defensive positions. But you should always remember that since they are facing those defensive positions, their armor while it's moving is constantly receiving anti-tank fire, air, air power uh, fire and artillery fire constantly. And the units, the red dots have here are the rear guard actions will where gradually they're gonna get destroyed, but they are slowing down the enemy infantry and they are causing it a battle fatigue. Now, as we move in, uh, and now the black team is across the first line of defense of the red team, their troops have already fought for a day or two, so they are starting to get exhausted, but just a bit. Uh, their armor has started to receive quite some casualties with anti-tanks, especially their units here, here, and their infantry a bit here, while the red army is currently just facing with full force the enemy. Now, at this point, again, fog of war, the black team doesn't know exactly what is happening on the other side. So, again, their plan will be to continue their offensive. So they've seen that there is uh, a defensive line there, but they do have quite a strong concentration of armor here and quite a strong of infantry and armor concentration here. So we'll try to use that as well as do a dual envelopment of the first village they encounter. At the same time, in the south, they would just try to push in until they meet some heavy resistance or if there is not heavy resistance, to outflank uh, the red team. So, as the battle progresses, they manage to break through the first line of defense of the majority of the front line. But again, uh, because of the rearguard action and the in-between defensive positions where you call the strong points where we observe here and here, reinforced by the anti-tank positions we said priority, so the anti-tank is constantly firing on those armor um, battalions. Those armor battalions now start to suffer quite severe casualties. Not all of them, but especially the ones on the north. Now, the, the infantry in the north of the red team has, has retreated to the main city, which is well ducked in sub, and supplied. And as we said in the videos, it's really hard to penetrate a city, especially when it's reinforced and especially with their pre-existing supplies there. You need a lot of firepower to be able to achieve it and infantry assaults. At the same time in the south, the black team has encountered the first defenses, which is on a mountainside, making the whole operation really hard and constantly receiving anti-tank fire. Also, their mechanized units have uh, started facing the first line of defense uh, of the red team, and they will try to push in as much as possible. Now, the objective is, again, here, fog of war, they don't know what's happening, so let's try to push in the infantry to cover that area, and at the same time, try to do a flanking maneuver over the red team. The red team, at the same time, still doesn't move in the reinforcements. The point is to wear down the enemy as much as possible. So the more they're wearing it down, the more they're using their anti-tanks, uh, and uh, the retreating to the second line of defense, their troops have, they are fully battled already, they are not exhausted, the black team has been fighting continuous for days, so their ammunition is quietly depleted, they haven't captured a major city, so the supply lines have to go through some very weird pattern, which means they are massively exposed to uh, artillery and pre-existing anti-mines and maybe some partisan power. But again, the black team thinking that since they have managed to overpass the first line of defense, they can push in to the second. Here on the north, we see the only mechanized uh, unit of the red team, which has some armor that's hiding um, behind some entrenched positions to ambush the other expecting mechanized unit which the red team can observe because they only encounter that unit. And at the same time, the black team tries to completely encircle uh, the village in the center. And uh, let's see how it develops. 
So they do manage to encircle the village in the center, but the village, since the troops are well in, dug in, well supplied, they are not receiving a lot of casualties. But at the same time, the black team is trying to push in into the city and starts to receive quite a lot of casualties doing so. In the north, they manage to push through. They are, clo they are trying to close in uh, the encirclement of the city and they are probably expecting the red team to bring in more supplies or to withdraw from the city so they will try to cut them off there. While in the south, they manage to breach at a point of the south, but that point was pre-assigned there to begin with, with some uh, rear guard action units uh, across the front line, and an expecting uh, heavy, very heavy anti-tank uh, positions uh, in the second line of defense. Now the mechanized units do not know it is, uh, so their idea is to just push in. Now. Here the symbol is that the armored unit has suffered so much casualties that uh, it's retreating from the battlefield uh, up to this point due to the heavy artillery in the focus. Uh, here the armor will try to push in, maybe if they can push in the line of defense. Again, they do not know what's happening. And especially when you have entrenched position, it's really hard to know uh, uh, to go over the fog of war. At the same time, the black team will focus on eliminating the pocket of the defense in the center, while in the south, they will fall into a trap. In the north, they will try to close off the city and at the same time, attempt to destroy the red team's forces while they retreat. Now, the red team forces do not retreat at this point. They are in circle in both of the cities and now they have received quite a lot of casualties. But here in the south, they did manage to capture more ground, but the red team has gradually withdrawn above the mountain. Their mechanized uh, uh, battalion in the south has suffered quite severe casualties, and the one in the north, few casualties, and maybe they believe they can use this as exploitation. Also, new reinforcements are coming in, in armor to go in and support the, uh, the forces already attacking. They already managed to push through the second line of defense using their remaining of armor, mechanized units, as well as their infantry. But here comes the cave caveat of the Russian concept of war of a defensive depth. The idea is that if you have uh, uh, units that are encircled, you should always prepare for them to already have the supplies prior. So you as the defendant will pin down as many troops as possible to your encirclement and thus you have less troops to use for the offensive. So in this case, they have three infantry battali uh, battalions and circle the two battalions of the red team. And here they have practically four. The idea is that if they remove the majority, only leave one battalion protecting them. Since that battalion is already depleted, the red team can launch their own counterattack within the pocket. And since the... Uh, they will have the advantage of uh, interior lines of defense. They could easily break out in any direction they would like. So you need, as the attacker, to have more troops surrounding a city and enlarging a siege. At the same time, uh, they will try to focus their artillery to eliminate those pockets so they can free those infantry units to push in. At the same time, the red team is also receiving more reinforcements, which is planning to use them as a counteroffensive. We can analyze a scenario with where this doesn't happen, but in this case, let's say it does. So it has so it up to this point it has managed to delay the attack of the black team for a more than a week so. So reinforcements of the red team are already on their way and they have arrived. They could have arrived much, much faster, but let's say there was a massive delay. The units in the south. Uh, they will try to continue and push in through, thinking that their reinforcements of armor, as well as their mechanized and armor and infantry uh, battalions here, will be able to push through uh, the enemy and as a result completely cut off the city, unexpecting the uh, reinforces of the enemy or the extent of the reinforcements of the enemy and at the same time they are also retreating their armor their, their other armor uh, battalion due to the severe casualties 
casualties is has taken. Now, they did manage to push in, but now they, is, they suffered even more severe casualties as they have been exposed by attacks on both of, on thrice of their flanks from anti-tanks from the city and attacks from pre-assigned defensive mines, anti-tank positions, pre-assigned anti-tank positions, a specific artillery fire on it, and they start to encounter some issues, but they did manage to break through. The infantry in the center is almost ready to destroy uh, uh, the, 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 the forces in the city, but they have managed to achieve that in a short amount of time by using strong infantry assaults, and doing so means a lot of casualties. They could have held back and delayed uh, us to uh, let the forces in the center and destroy them piece by piece, but if you are conducting uh, a more fast-paced operation, you don't have the time to do this. For example, you've seen the Battle of Bakhmut in recent years, or the Battle of Afrin in 2018. A village or a city to fall, it might take months. So to take it within a few days, it means you have to use very strong infantry attacks unsupported by artillery, thus you are expecting a lot of casualties. With red, I show this, the casualty rates that those units have suffered. Uh, the, here, these units almost decimated to the point that it will have to retreat. Now, the plan is that according to the red team in the south, while their reinforced infantry is depleted, they believe they could destroy the enemy and capture the heights. But at the same time, they are not expecting the very strong armor counterattack as well as reinforced infantry and infantry that still hasn't even engaged in combat. So we shouldn't forget the battle fatigue. The majority of the red forces are quite well rested and well supplied, while the other forces have continuously been fighting, facing obstacles, uh, their logistics are uh, trickling, so their reinforcement rate is much, much slower. And here the, uh, the red team, the black team will focus on completely eliminating uh, this battalion and at the same time achieve their objective on encirclement and using their, their armor to pin down any possible counterattacks that that will might come from the armor. While the red team is masquerading itself and waiting for the black team to do this, which is the expected scenario, and then uh, do a counterattack. And we're also going to make a video later on on the importance of conducting counterattacks. So the black team uh, comes into contact with the red team. Uh, gets massively surprised. Again, their flanks were massively exposed. The artillery was focused on them and they lose to two of their most important units here, which uh, previously had received quite a lot of damage. So this unit and this unit is completely destroyed by this point. And so they, they got routed, as we said. Uh, and the question is whether to continue the offensive or not at this point. Because what they know is that they do not know the real strength of the enemy. And here is the thing uh, that you may think throughout the video. How come that the artillery of the black team has caused very little damage to the uh, red team's defendants while the artillery of the red team has caused way more damage to the black team? In war, in general, firepower and artillery specifically does the majority of casualties, even when it comes to armor. So when armor is not moving, a heavy artillery bombardment and air bombardment can devastate it. But if you are in, in pre-existing entrenched positions, or in a city, or in a mountainside, or in a forest, then the effectiveness of those artillery gets massively reduced. I have a video specifically on the terrain and the impact it has each terrain on uh, infantry and armor. Now, this battle is kind of lost for the, it's not, it's lost for the red team, and uh, for the black team, the red team will now focus to completely encircle uh, the units on the south since their counterattack was successful. The black team uh, infantry battalions that already suffered heavy casualties in the south and they are in the mountainside will attempt to retreat, but this will result to a rout. Uh, they do not know that. Their idea is to create at least a rear guard action because they don't know the uh, the expect they 
try to push in with their infantry, which is at this point massively depleted, to pin down their forces. And at the same time, what they will want to do is to either close in this pocket here completely and at least hold the line here because they already encountered very severe, so at least hold on to the line and manage to bring these battalions into a better defensive position here. Again, due to the fog of war and their very exposed position to open plains will lead them to even more severe casualties. Then we come to this scenario where the, the forces on the south got completely routed, the armored units of the red team are pushing in, they are fresh units, they are don't suffer severe battle fatigue. Their forces in the center have suffered so much casualties that are practically unable to conduct any offensive operations. And you have to understand that a depleted infantry battalion can still uh, possess quite a strong defensive capabilities, but its attacking capabilities get massively restricted. And especially if you have been fighting continuously, continuously, and continuously, uh, your ammunition, your supplies, your morale gets decreasing to the point that the battle effectiveness of your force compared to the, what it was originally, it was much, much uh, lower. So the general idea for the black team now is a run for your lives, a massive so-called route. And this ends the scenario. Now, a lot of you might be uh, arguing that, yes, but the red team received massive uh, reinforcements. The main concept here is not which one wins is the understanding of the importance of the war game. So let's say we go back to here, okay? Imagine, let's say that the red team did not go to uh, these reinforcements, okay? So in this case, if they didn't have those reinforcements, the uh, black team will have eliminated the pocket here. They could have concentrated their armor as well as with their other armor, bring it here, gradually push in and push in and push in, so pass one defensive position after another defensive position, and the same thing with the south, so gradually push in, the red team will gradually retreat without receiving a lot of casualties behind their defensive positions, so they will come to a point that the front line will resemble something like this. And then eventually they will push in even further and the front line will resemble something like this. So two encirclements and they have uh, their terrain open for a massive at assault in the north. At what cost? At what cost? The importance of attacking and breaking the enemy lines is once you manage to break through, to be able to exploit that breakthrough and then push in and complete the encirclement and destruction of the enemy's armies. So, for example, as we've seen in the other video here, where you break through and you push your divisions across the field and move them in. If your divisions have suffered so much casualty, so out of your uh, three armor uh, divisions, only one has sufficient strength to move past that single city, then how are you able to even gain any more ground? And an armor division is very, very, very expensive, both in actual monetary cost, as well as military cost in personnel and everything. While an infantry division is quite very, very, very cheap. So heavy reinforcements of defenses and entrenchment makes an infantry division very strong against an armor division, Co do, dealing quite a lot of damage and as a result cost uh, strength to cost ratio of an infantry division in a defensive position is a much 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 more favorable than in an armored division. For the black team to be able to overcome defenses such as we see them with a deep defensive system is to gradually hit uh, the various uh, positions of the enemy, so gradually moving 
only focus on specific points, gradually destroy the enemy one by one, so concentrate the majority of your forces at one point, while the rest of the army acts as a rear guard. Once you eliminate some positions, slowly push in again, act as a rear guard, destroy, destroy, and gradually break the enemy's uh, deep defense position at one part of the line, and then you can uh, push in through. And this is assuming that the uh, enemy doesn't have the reinforcements. If it does have the reinforcements, then maybe you should not launch a counterattack to begin with. Anyway, uh, thanks again for watching. Please like and subscribe. And if you have any ideas uh, you like me to ask or if you want me to make videos specifically about the topic, I will be glad to do them. I already made a video asked by a viewer. And uh, I'm expecting your recommendations. If you have any more questions, I'm glad to answer them. Thanks again for watching uh, and have a good night.